death toll tops 2000. Travel restrictions extended until the 21st of June. Cost of Living Subcommittee nods to revise fuel prices. Date to be announced later. Healthcare workers continue trade union action. Vaccination and clinical programs disrupted. <laughs> European Commission to review GSP Plus facility given to Sri Lanka. On to those stories in detail. Army Commander General Shavinda Silva has said that the travel restrictions that are in effect will be extended until 4 a.m. on the 21st of this month. Accordingly, travel restrictions will not be lifted at 4 a.m. on the 14th. Commander General Shavendra Silva noted that the apparel and construction sectors will operate when travel restrictions are in effect. He noted economic centers will also remain open during this period. According to the Army Commander, agricultural activities and the production of organic fertilizer can be carried out when travel restrictions are in effect. 2,232 new COVID-19 infections were detected in the country today. Accordingly, Sri Lanka's tally of COVID-19 infections stand at 218,366. 1,852 recoveries were reported today as well. The Department of Government Information said that the total recoveries stand at 184,090. Why were healthcare services disrupted today? Health sector unions launched a trade union action citing several demands today. All operations in the health sector were affected except for those in hospitals and treatment facilities for COVID-19 patients. Healthcare personnel engaged in their trade union action opposite the hospitals, while patients at the Colombo General Hospital outpatient department express their sheer frustration. The health ministry has put forward a cabinet proposal to increase the allowances of only doctors by 78%. The cabinet has approved that proposal. The jabs have been distributed only to families of doctors. The same applies to allowances and vehicles as well. The rest of the staff have to purchase masks out of their own purse. They have to spend for their travelling fares as well. The directors slash their wages as well. Treating healthcare personnel indifferently will obstruct the health sector from moving forward. Healthcare workers at the Candy General Hospital stage their demonstration during the lunch break. Trade union actions were also staged at the Piradinia Teaching Hospital. However, many patients had not arrived to attend medical clinics at that time. Trade unions carried out their demonstrations at the Kalubovila Teaching Hospital as well. They were joined by healthcare workers at the Chilau General Hospital. A silent protest was staged at the Tangol and Balasmulla base hospitals. Healthcare workers attached to the Gampaha, Polonnaruwa and Kurunagala district hospitals and the Kurunagala teaching hospital were also involved in the trade union action. A similar situation was seen at the Jaffna, Kinya, Kilinochi and Mathale hospitals. Vaccination programs across the country were disrupted today due to the trade union action carried out by healthcare workers. Vaccination programs at the Ratnavali Balika Vidyalaya and the Gampaha Municipal Council did not begin on time this morning due to the strike. Our correspondents reported that long queues were seen in the area due to the delays. Okay. 
People are queued up at this location. Won't this lead to a new wave of infections or a cluster? Where is this country heading? When there are several issues in the country, they are focusing on importing vehicles for parliamentarians and increasing the allowances of doctors. People are unable to afford even rice. Is this the correct thing to do? What are they doing to us? They have shown scant regard to the people's lives. We are requesting the government to take decisions that will benefit the people. Meanwhile, the vaccination program at the office of the medical officer of health in Kotalavala did not take place this morning. People who gathered in Kalutara North to receive the jab had to return back as well. If anyone has gone back, please let us apologize for that. We couldn't administer the vaccines due to the strike, but we will proceed with the vaccination. Therefore, please support us. They tried to spread a conception that doctors have sought additional funds. This is completely false. According to the establishment code, we must first see whether those individuals have additional funds or allowances outside the prescribed limits. We wish to state that allowances must be provided to public health inspectors, nurses and frontline workers. We don't object that. But medical officers of health and other medical personnel, especially those attached to COVID-19 treatment facilities, are working tirelessly around the clock. We requested for a special allowance for those healthcare workers. What happened to the 126,000 doses of the Covishield vaccine? Sri Lanka has received 1,264,000 doses of the Covishield vaccine, with 10 doses of the jab packed into one vial. This would mean that Sri Lanka had received 126,400 vials of the Covishield vaccine. The Government Medical Officers Association said that each vial would contain one or two additional Covishield jabs. According to the GMOA, the epidemiology units had first issued a directive to discard the additional doses included in a vial. 18,000 vials had been used up at that time. Statistics indicate that the health ministry had discarded about 25,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine that has been manufactured under the brand name Covishield. If there are vaccines that had gone to waste, it is much smaller compared to what has been administered. I don't believe that those jabs could have been used to avert the crisis that we are experiencing at present. The health ministry says that additional doses are included in a vial to cover up for the contents that would be lost when drawing out the vaccine using a syringe. But the health ministry has said that each Covishield vaccine had been administered fully through syringes that can draw only the desired amount of the vaccine. This would mean the vaccine will not go to waste. Assuming that each vial contains an additional dose, this will mean Sri Lanka would have a surplus of 126,400 vaccines. Although the incorrect directive issued by the epidemiology unit saw 25,000 doses going to waste, there would have been a surplus of more than 100,000 jabs. As Sri Lanka continues to grapple with a shortage of 600,000 Covishield jabs to be administered as the second dose, the management of about 100,000 surplus vaccines would have helped minimize the crisis. However, the health ministry had utilized only approximately 16,000 surplus doses by yesterday. As details came to light that the second dose of the Covishield vaccine had been administered in Gaul to residents of other areas, the Director General of Health Services had written to provincial health officers and hospital directors to return all Covishield vials to the central storage facility of the epidemiology unit. However, the written directive does not indicate the number of remaining vials. The Public Service United Nurses Union convened a media briefing today. 
api agramartya mahindra rajapaksa when we were discussing issues with prime minister mahindra rajapaksa pavitra vanyara she refuted such activities she denied issuing a directive to that effect but they had obtained cabinet approval the next day this is where the conflict arises we wish to tell pavitra vanyara chi to avoid creating a rift during her tenure in office at the same time we wish to tell the government medical officers association to avoid displaying their might and exerting their influence as it can lead to destruction when something is being provided to nurses what right do they have to object it don't act selfishly by agreeing to decisions when it benefits you and by opposing decisions when it benefits others evar prasthi gayana karanda ape vai sangame sudanam gande pa meanwhile japan has said that it will allocate 30 million doses of the covid-19 vaccines for other countries including through the coax facility in an email response to news first the japanese embassy said that japan is discussing sri lanka's request for vaccines with the government it declined to make further comments on these diplomatic communications minister uday gamman pilla has said that the cabinet's cost of living subcommittee has decided to revise the prices of fuel he noted that the date on which the new prices would come into effect will not be announced to prevent long queues at fuel stations amidst the covid-19 pandemic the government is well aware that the people are facing hardships as they have lost their modes of income that is why the government did not increase the prices of fuel for 21 months although prices had increased in the world market but unfortunately the government cannot bear these massive losses this is the first time in history in which prices have remained unchanged for a long time when costs soared in the world market by the end of 2020 the accumulated losses of the ceylon petroleum corporation stands at 331 billion rupees therefore the cpc is unable to settle its debt this has posed the government a massive challenge of spending 3 billion for fuel imports accordingly the cabinet's cost of living subcommittee held a lengthy discussion on this and decided to revise the prices of fuel it will take place in the future we are unable to inform it in advance as it will prompt large queues in filling stations thereby affecting our efforts to combat the covid-19 pandemic if a cluster forms in this manner they will call it the gumman pillar cluster the rising prices of fuel will go down at a certain point when prices go down the excess money will be transferred to a fund and will be invested in treasury bonds when prices increase the government will not burden the public and instead provide the funds to those entities ඒ පාඩු ජනතාවට දෙන්නේ නැතුව ඒ පාඩු පියවනවා අර අර මුදල් සල්ලි අදාළ ආයතනවලට ලබා දීලා අපිට වඩා ඒක පුද්ගල ආදායම අඩු රටවල් වුණා වුණා පෙට්‍රල් මිල සහ ඩීසල් මිල the prices of fuel in other countries with a less gdp per capita than ours are high if we didn't make this change it will affect the stability of our country that is why we had to make this decision if we don't revise this decision it will affect the country's credit ratings it will also affect financial stability in the country apita e tatwaya me uda kara ganna wenawa e kenekat apita matak kala denata awashya while the government has announced plans to hike fuel prices the discourse on importing luxury suvs has reemerged Addressing a media briefing today, the leader of the JVP, Anur Kumar Desanayake, revealed the letters of credit to import 339 vehicles, including luxury SUVs, into the country had been opened even before cabinet approval was granted to move ahead with the proposal. Me maagavati binni garu agramate tuma mahindra raja paksh me tuma visin me ma vahana genuim sanda idiripat kala the cabinet patrikaav. Kavadi idiripat kala ti binni dedas visieki. What I have with me is the cabinet paper submitted by the prime minister. It has been presented on the 18th of May 2021. Official approval is granted only once cabinet approval is given and the minutes have been recorded. The cabinet which convened on the 24th has suspended the decision to import the vehicles. Now, such a cabinet paper does not exist. If so, how were letters of credit opened? LCs were opened on the 22nd of April 2021. prior to cabinet approval being given the friends decided to open lcs and then sought cabinet approval they have then included a clause requesting approval for all actions taken prior to the cabinet paper being presented the cabinet paper was presented to conceal the scam it is evident that this is a precursor to a large fraud the attempt to import these vehicles should be stopped at a time sri lanka is facing an acute shortage of foreign exchange at a time the country is grappling with a pandemic and there is a shortage of funds to purchase equipment to combat that pandemic this attempt to import vehicles must be stopped authorities should probe who opened lcs prior to cabinet approval being granted we request the citizens of this country do not let the minister who you appointed come to your village in this vehicle 
Travelling on this vehicle would equal going over the bodies of people. The government should act to stop this immediately. If the government wants, it could allow the time frame of the LC to lapse. If the importation cannot be stopped, the vehicles should be auctioned and finances must be raised. You allowed the People's Bank to import 399 luxury vehicles. The People's Bank is regulated by the Central Bank. Parliamentarians and ministers are saying that there will be insufficient funds to procure vaccines. Against such a backdrop, you have granted approval to import 399 vehicles. This is a sin. It is a difficult question. You spoke about granting approval. The central bank hasn't approved that. We learned about it after it occurred. This question must be directed towards the People's Bank and government agencies. I don't want to respond to this question. It is difficult to justify it. What is going to happen to Sri Lanka's GSP plus status? What is going to happen to the economy of our country as a result of the latest resolution that has been adopted by the EU parliament? regarding a temporary withdrawal of Sri Lanka's GSP plus status. What is the GSP facility? The generalized system of preferences is known as the GSP facility. Import duty on products coming into European nations from developing countries are removed under this scheme. The European Commission chooses the countries for this facility. Selected countries have to implement 27 international conventions on human rights, labor rights, the environment and good governance. When was Sri Lanka deemed eligible for it? Sri Lanka enjoyed GSP benefits since 2005 before it was stopped in 2010. The EU stopped granting GSP benefits to Sri Lanka for failing to address reported human rights violations. But the facility was granted again to Sri Lanka in 2017, this time in the form of GSP+. What is the difference between GSP and GSP+. Under the GSP facility, customs duties are either partially or fully removed from products coming into European Union countries. But under the GSP Plus, the tariffs are completely wiped off for products from selected countries, including Sri Lanka. The current GSP Plus scheme offered to eight countries, including Sri Lanka, will lapse in 2023. How has Sri Lanka benefited from this? In 2020, Sri Lanka was the European Union's largest trading partner in goods. The European Union is Sri Lanka's second largest trading partner after China and its second main export destination. Last year, Sri Lanka had exported goods worth 3.1 billion US dollars to the European Union and 223 million US dollars to China. What is the latest resolution adopted by the European Parliament? The European Union Parliament has adopted a resolution calling on the EU Commission to consider the temporary withdrawal of Sri Lanka's GSP plus status. The request has been done citing that Sri Lanka has excessively applied the Prevention of Terrorism Act without adhering to international human rights principles. It recalled that Sri Lanka has been granted GSP plus status on the condition that it would replace the Prevention of Terrorism Act and implement 27 international conventions, including on human rights. The resolution noted that the 20th Amendment to the Constitution has expressed serious doubts over the decline in judicial independence and parliamentary control. The European Union in the resolution has also expressed concerns about the growing role and interference of China in Sri Lanka. It would be beneficial to receive that facility. We didn't receive it for a certain period. An upper middle income country might not receive this concession. When taking Sri Lanka's future into account, I feel it is not good to completely rely on these concessionary schemes. We know that most of our exports are targeted at the US and the European region. But as a country, we need to diversify our exports instead of focusing on just production. This is a good time to identify our export markets.
Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa has tweeted that the resolution calling for the temporary suspension of the GSP Plus facility will impact the country's exports and economy. He said the government's amateurish foreign policy conducted unprofessionally will have severe economic repercussions. From 2011 to 2016, our country's export revenue increased only by 1.7 billion euros to 1.8 billion euros. This is a 6% growth. But once the GSP Plus facility was given to us in 2017, export revenue rose from 1.8 billion euros to 2.3 billion. This is an increase of 28%. Are we going to retain the GSP Plus facility and strengthen the rupee against the US dollar and the euro? If that is the case, the government must stop violating human rights. They must stop infringing on personal freedom. They must stop militarizing this country and strengthen civic rights. Recently, people were arrested over certain social media posts and remanded, claiming it is fake news. It is the government which disseminates most of the fake news. The law is being enforced based on the whims and fancies of those in power. There is no democracy in that. They are acting with the intention of amassing power even if it comes at the cost of losing the GSP plus concessions. Bellboys got you covered. Download Bellboy today to get all your household appliance fixing and repairs done. Now available on Android and iOS. Do your online shopping with Sambole.lk. Home delivery and pickup now available. Sambole. You're watching News First, still in local news. The China-Sri Lanka Friendship Hospital that has been constructed in Polonnaruwa was declared open by President Kotabe Rajapaksa today. <laughs> President Gotabe Rajapaksa and former President Maitri Pala Sirisena participated in the opening ceremony of the National Nephrology Specialized Hospital today. The foundation stone for the hospital was constructed at a cost of 12 billion rupees, was laid by former President Sirisena on the 21st of July in 2018. The construction of the hospital, which was carried out based on ancient architectural patterns in Sri Lanka and China, had been completed in 30 months. The hospital, comprising of five operation theatres, can accommodate up to 200 patients at a time. Twenty intensive care unit beds, a blood transfusion unit with 100 machines and a medical clinic for kidney-related ailments and a new operation theatre are among the facilities in the National Nephrology Specialized Hospital. The Chinese government had gifted the hospital to Sri Lanka in 2015 based on a request made by former President Maitri Pala Sirisena during a visit to China. President Gotabe Rajapaksa, former President Maitri Pala Sirisena and the others present at the opening ceremony engaged in an inspection tour at the hospital. Although this was declared open today for the benefit of the people, it will take at least a month to get operations up and running. The President has instructed the Ministry Secretary and the Director General of Health Services to designate healthcare personnel including doctors and nurses within a month and to then start admitting patients. Therefore, we can consider the China-Sri Lanka Friendship Hospital as an important component in the health sector. Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa and his spouse, arrived at the Hunupitiya Ganga Rame temple today. The leader of the opposition and his spouse received blessings of the Mahasangha after attending religious observances in the temple. One must think about others before thinking about themselves. One of the reasons why my wife and I tested positive for COVID-19 was refusing to get vaccinated. We refused to get the vaccine because we thought the people of this country must get vaccinated before us. That was our policy. I would once again like to note that as a public servant, I will not get vaccinated until all the citizens of the country are vaccinated. We are in the midst of a global health crisis. A pandemic that has devastated all our countries. Vaccine development and vaccine deployment. We need 
the vaccine equity it should be. So harness the momentum and turn it into action. There is no choice but multilateralism for international cooperation. Multilateralism and sustainable development, the UNGA's way forward. An exclusive conversation with the 76th President-elect of the United Nations General Assembly and Foreign Minister of the Maldives, Abdullah Shahid. Sunday, 13th June at 9.30 p.m. on TV1 and concurrent release on all News First digital platforms. Welcome back to the news. In a statement released by the Bar Association of Sri Lanka today, the association has expressed its concerns with regard to the importance of maintaining the freedom of speech and expression, right to comment and criticize in a democratic society. The association highlighted the importance of ensuring that authorities do not use laws to stifle genuine expressions of dissent and criticism. The statement was issued after the recent media release from Sri Lanka police stating people who spread fake news, photographs and or videos will be arrested. The statement states that association have deep concerns with regard to the rationale used by the authorities in determining what falls into the category of fake news and on the factors considered in arresting and detaining individuals on these charges. Sri Lanka is now probably for the first time facing a situation of protecting its environment from a shipwreck with hazardous cargo on board. What measures have local authorities taken to seek compensation over the disaster? The Singapore registered MV Express Pearl has been slowly sinking into the sea of Sri Lanka and the ship aft portion remains on the seabed at a depth of about 21 metres. This has sparked fears that the 300 metric tonnes of fuel oil in the ship's tanks could leak. Express feeders, operators of the container ship Express Pearl, said that representatives of ITOPF and oil spill response are monitoring updates from the scene and remain on standby to be deployed in case of any reported spill. Sri Lanka's Marine Environmental Protection Authority has repeatedly said that authorities were prepared for a possible oil spill, but that the heavy monsoon rains and strong winds have turned the seas rough and made operations much harder. However, activists have called on the Sri Lankan government to seek separate international experts for this process. We have uh, received reports that uh, a group of assessors have requested uh, the permission from the Sri Lankan authorities to assess the damage caused to the Sri Lankan environment uh, and uh, to various sectors as a result of the disaster caused by the Express Pearl ship. But uh, this is not a new thing, this is a normal thing which is done by the PNI club uh, which is commonly known as the Protection and Indemnity Insurance Club because they normally, even in any accident, normally the claim uh, will not be completely met by the insurer. When the claim is not completely uh, agreed upon by the insurer, it is the duty of the claimant to obtain the rest of the damage by the wrongdoer. Therefore, at this instance, it is the duty of the Sri Lankan authorities to set up independent panels comprising of uh, experts. That is why wh what we have actually uh, sought from the Supreme Court in our court case also to make direction to the Sri Lankan authorities to set up independent panels comprising of independent experts in each and every sphere. All these categories should be separately analyzed by experts in their field. If Sri Lanka do not have experts, we can even hire experts for that purpose. But we should not let the wrongdoer only to pay us the insurance uh, amount which is agreed upon by the insurer and escape. The Singapore flagged cargo vessel was carrying a consignment of hazardous chemicals including 25 metric tons of nitric acid, ethanol, lead ingots, dust urea, frilled urea, high density and low density polyethylene, epoxy resin, sodium methoxide, caustic soda, aluminium processing byproducts, raw materials for cosmetics, food items and general cargo from Qatar and Gujarat to the Colombo port. With the sinking of the ship, the release of the chemicals is a serious risk to the ocean and the coastal ecosystem. Local fishermen have also voiced concern as the debris from the ship contaminates the Sea of Sri Lanka. 
in Nevis, do we even pass it? We set out to sea after the disaster. During each trip, we came across dead sea turtles, dolphins and other marine life floating on the waters. When the sea gets rough, these dead marine animals wash up on the Sri Lankan shores. The debris in the ocean needs to be removed and who is responsible for this? This is a crime. I am 65 years of age and I have never seen so many dead sea turtles during my lifetime. I saw around 10 dead sea turtles a few days ago. The United States will be providing 100,000 US dollars in immediate assistance to support response efforts to the MV Express Pearl ship fire. The U.S. Embassy said assistance will deliver immediate support to families whose livelihoods were affected by this emergency and expand ongoing support for response coordination and management. Sri Lanka is lurking in the dark as concerns grow regarding an oil spill. Will Sri Lanka be adequately compensated in this disaster, which is considered to be Sri Lanka's worst maritime disaster? A state-of-the-art testing laboratory is to be set up at the Hammantota International Port. The project will be carried out under a joint venture between Intertech Group Private Limited and MMBL Pathfinder. Intertech Lanka Limited has signed an agreement with the Hammantota Port for a 10-year partnership to establish its services in the port. This will enable the port's clients to get products such as fuel oil and marine diesel tested at the petroleum laboratory at the port premises. With that we cross over to a short commercial break but before we do that a reminder to you that you can keep abreast of all these stories and more on our award winning website www.newsfirst.lk. Let's meet on the other side. In the midst of a global health crisis. A pandemic that has devastated all our countries. Vaccine development and vaccine deployment. We need the vaccine equity issue to be so harness the momentum and turn it into action. There is no choice but multilateralism for international cooperation. Multilateralism and sustainable development, the UNGA's way forward. An exclusive conversation with the 76th President-elect of the United Nations General Assembly and Foreign Minister of the Maldives, Abdullah Shahid. Sunday, 13th June at 9.30 p.m. on TV1 and concurrent release on all News First digital platforms. Welcome back to the news. The Sri Lankan elephant has been both romanticized and demonized for centuries. These magnificent creatures are a vital asset of our nation. However, by today, the Sri Lankan elephant population has diminished owing to many fatal incidents. Today, such an unfortunate incident was reported from Pudur, Paunia. A tusker that had been Im in immense pain and was immobile for over a month succumbed to its injuries this evening. The death of the tusker has prompted environmentalists to raise serious concerns on the conduct of responsible authorities in terms of managing and protecting these creatures. The tusker that lost its life today had been immobile for over a month at a paddy field in Pudur, Waunia. Officers of the Department of Wildlife have noted the gentle giant had been suffering for an extensive period due to an ailment in its spinal cord. Authorities had begun treating the animal on Wednesday using a backhoe to assist the animal to stand on its feet. <laughs> Today, the Tusker breathed its last, despite the efforts of the authorities. Images shared widely on social media revealed a group including Venerable Magal Kande Sudhatathera and State Minister Dilum Mamurgama had visited the location where the Tusker had been receiving treatment during the last two days. Based on these images, this group included Samarapulige Niraj Roshan, infamously known as Ali Roshan an individual who has been indicted in court for the illegal possession of elephants. These images prove to us that a number of people who bear no legal authority to visit the location had been present in the area while treatments were ongoing. How did an external party include itself in efforts to treat an animal under the care of the Department of Wildlife? 
Dilum went there because the president instructed him to do so. I don't know whether there are any ties between Ali Roshan and Dilum. I spoke to the Buddhist monks as well. Mangal Kandithira was also there. They had requested for them to remain at the location to be involved in ensuring that the condition of the Tusker improves. I informed the Director General that legal approval can be granted for this if we have no alternative but to seek someone's support in curing the animal. I feel that they visited the area with a wildlife department officer by the name of Chandanathapattu. There is a case against him as well. Therefore, there is no legal or ethical right to get involved with a defendant. Environmentalists had this to say. When we heard about it, we contacted the wildlife department. Its officers said that a person representing the president had asked the group to come. The wildlife department said that they would not allow Ali Roshan to visit the area. But eventually, he along with certain others facing elephant racketeering charges had visited the area along with the Buddhist monk. Elephant owners who had ill-treated the animals and are facing a case against the wildlife department had also visited the area. They had exerted pressure on wildlife officers asking to vest them with the task of treating the animal. A state minister had then arrived with Ali Roshan and then attempted to make the elephant stand upright. They should have been in prison by now. Those who should be in prison should not be involved in the treatment of elephants or any other related activity. Could this be accepted as a proper method to hoist any animal, let alone a tusker? These animals shouldn't be moved using backhoes. When such an incident happens, then it will damage internal organs. We believe this was the case here. It will apply pressure on the chest and the respiratory system of the elephant. These are large animals. Nowhere in the world are these animals carried around in this manner. We believe that this activity expedited the elephant's death. We feel this elephant, which could have been rescued, had lost its life due to this. The wildlife department informed us that those individuals had been discussing on taking the elephant away. That means that they had tried to move the elephant onto a lorry. Tuskers are killed for their tusks. We know that the Andadala tusker and the Mahakandarava tusker, Valagamba tusker, Podipurtua and several other tuskers had been killed for their tusks. We know that various ministers had obtained tusks when they were being taken to the wildlife department. There are less than 140 tuskers. Some 40 tuskers had died in the last couple of years. We know that they killed the tuskers out of greed for tusks. The report of this tusker's death makes us wonder. Could this majestic creature have been nursed back to full health and released to roam the wilderness once again? Had it been treated by empathetic individuals with an admiration and adoration towards these creatures? Well, that's all the news we have for you this evening. We remind you to stay safe and enjoy a safe weekend at home. I've been Chaturang Haparachi. Thank you very much for watching.